In eighth grade math, we have decided to move to standards-based grading. The main reason we've done this is because we want to accurately be able to tell students and parents where a, where a student would be possibly having a lot of success in math and maybe where they're struggling a little bit. What we've decided to do is break it down into four categories, and we call those either a mastery of the standard, which would be a four, a three would be proficiency of the standard, a two would be a pro approaching proficiency, and a one significant progress would be required uh, to become proficient. Uh, so these are the four categories, and the students are placed into these categories based on how they do on their target assessment and their test. There's a total of nine questions that we ask them from those two assessments. However they do on those, they get placed either in a one, a two, or a three. So for example, if a student gets four out of nine questions correct, we place them in the proficiency, uh, approaching proficiency of the standard. From there, they can move up into proficiency and they can even move up into the mastery. For them to move into proficiency or for them to move up, we have something called math interventions. And math interventions require them to take a three-step process uh, to move their grade up. So anytime a student is at a one or a two, they can do this. And what they do is they um, first watch a video that we have, a reteaching video, and then there's problems at the end of that video that they need to do. Then what they need to do is make any test corrections. So any questions they got wrong on that particular portion of the test, they would need to redo. And then they're going to meet with their teacher. So those are the three steps. They watch a video, they make and do problems in the video, they make test corrections, and then they meet with their teacher. And they have to be able to accurately show their teacher that they understand the material and they, you know, um, can get problem, you know, some, some more problems right um, on that particular learning target to move up into the next category. And so like a one or a two can move up to be a three proficient of the standard if they can accurately represent or demonstrate that they know the material. Um, so that's kind of how it breaks down. I'll show you what it looks like on a, a student monitoring sheet in a second, but we also um, still need to give letter grades this year. Uh, which is a little challenging with standards-based grading. So we've come up with um, some different uh, percentages uh, that that meet um, or that that show their grades. We've decided to just go with an A, B, C, or D this year. And the reason being is because um, the reason we decided not to go with failing is because we wanted students not to have that as a thing. Like uh, failing math is, is is tough enough as it is. Um, so instead of doing that, we'd rather say, well, you 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 do really well at, you know, let's say 1.1, that learning target, but 1.4, you struggle with a little bit instead of the, saying that they failed math completely. Um, so we do it. We, we did decide to go with A, B, C, or D. Uh, there is a reason we went with the percentages we did. Um, 81.25 to 100% looks lower than a traditional, you know, grading scale of usually 90% or 93% would be an A. We decided to get rid of the minuses and just go with the 81.25 to 100. And I'll show you, you know, where we came up with that number in a second. But those are the percentages that we, we use to determine the particular um, letter grade. So what a student will do is they will fill out something that we have. We give them this document every single unit, and this is called a... Um, a student monitoring sheet to kind of see where they're at. And again, this, um, our grading format is on here as well. You know, it shows you, you know, where, what they've done on each of them, uh, each of the learning targets to get to that grade. So for example, let's say, I'm just going to take you through, you know, two kids for your one kid's example of one, one, and one, two. So let's say a kid on their target ends up getting a three out of four on their target. And then on their test score, they get a four out of, um, out of five. So we add those two scores together, this student would obviously have a seven out of nine on that particular uh, learning target. We go up here and we see where does that fall? Well, seven out of nine falls in that six, between six and nine category. So we would say the student is currently at a standards-based grade of a three. Now they can decide then if they want to do um, a mastery activity. And, and hopefully a student would say, yes, I would want to. Um, and we have a, a folder in Schoology where they would go and they would do a mastery activity. A mastery activity is like their 10th point. Essentially what they need to do is they need to apply the math to a situation. Um, all the mastery activities are a little bit different, uh, but again, the, the main point behind it is they need to apply it and use the math that they're doing. Um, some people would argue that if a student got all nine questions right, that they would be at a master. 
um, a, a master of that standard. But we look at it a little different, we, and we designed it this way where we want students to, like I said, apply their math to a scenario. And that's how we determine if they, if they um, if can become master of that standard. Um, so hopefully the student would say, yes, I need to do that. And hopefully they would say, no, I don't need to do math intervention because I'm already at the proficient level. So let's say that they go and do 1.2 and let's say they struggle a little bit more with this one. Let's say they have a two here and a three here. So they would have a five out of nine. And we've identified that to be a two, all right? Because again, they fell in between the four and the five range, they fell right on the five. So we would say that they are going to um, hopefully say, yes, I'm gonna do the math intervention. And that's again, a three part process, like I mentioned earlier in the video, where they watch a video of us reteaching the material, do the problems in the video, make test corrections, and then meet with their teacher um, and try to show that they understand the material at a proficient level. Um, at this point, they could still, if they are able to do that, and let's say they go up to a three, they could still do the mastery activity to go up to a four. They can always go to that mastery level, but first they have to reach proficiency. All right. So again, to reach proficiency, they have to get between six and nine right on their target or they need to correctly um, complete the math intervention. And then from there, once they get to that three, they can always go up to that four, all right? So again, where did we come up with the 81.25% for the A level? And again, so this would be, let's just say they, most of our, most of our um, standards have four specific learning targets within, inside of them, all right? So let's say a student did this right here. Let's say they got a four, a three, a three, and a three. Essentially, they've earned a total of 13 out of 16 points, and that is going to equate to the 81.25% that we have down for the A. So we're saying for a student to earn an A in our class, they have to be, um, or they have to somehow get to that 13 out of 16 in, in, in a learning target. And so that would mean being mastery, ma being a master at one of the, the lessons, and then proficient at the other three. Um, they could do this as well. I mean, obviously, they could go with a four, a four, a three, and a two, and that would obviously still get them to their 13 out of 16 points. Um, and so that's how we've determined the 81.25% as an A. And then from there, we went down and, and we said, what would be, what would we constitute a B and a C and a D? Um, and again, that's where we came up with it. And again, we decided not to give students Fs this year because we believe that it's more important to say, Yep, for example, 1.1, you are proficient at that. We feel good about where you're at at that. 1.2, well, you're approaching proficiency. Maybe in 1.3, they ended up with a one, and that could, you know, we could say, well, you're struggling with that unit a little bit. And we find that to be way more beneficial and way more confidence building in math if we can say, wow, look at how well you did in this one, 1.1, 1, 1, 1, one step and multi-step. You are really rocking that lesson. You really understand that you're proficient. Absolute value equations, you're struggling a little bit more on that. Let's work on that particular one. And that's the reason we've gone to standards-based grading is to be able to have those more meaningful conversations with students, not just to say that you're a B or a C or an A math student. It's more specific um, uh, and I think more beneficial for kids and, and more of a positive experience in the long run for students to say, man, I was successful in these specific areas in my math class. Thank you for watching.